Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. So great to, to be uh, with you again today. We're just gonna wait for a couple minutes here and get some people going, get the live stream uh, working here. It's um, just wonderful to be here. It's Audrey, this is Audrey Live and it's Thursday, March 24th. Uh, just uh, the, the year is just streaming by, that's for sure. And it is spring. It's just wonderful to be able to say that. I know my grandson, Micah, he's been waiting for the spring. He loves spring and summer. And uh, just wonderful that we could say to him, it is springtime, it is springtime, finally. So um, anyway, we're just so happy today on the show. We have two amazing uh, artists. We have uh, Marie Nays and Sally Tower Siblis, and they're both from the West Coast of Canada. So it's wonderful to have the, uh, the influence of the West Coast and to have some of our, a couple of our teachers that uh, have been teaching with us for quite a few years from the West Coast on the show today. Um, so we're just so happy to join the conversation that you're here and we get to uh, get to know them a little bit more and also get a sneak peek into their projects. Um, I'm Audrey DeYoung and I'm so glad that you tuned in here today. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a different backdrop here today. Uh, I'm actually at my mom's uh, in Kingsville for a few days this week, just, uh, just spending some time with her and uh, just being here and, and helping her out with some different appointments and things like that. So it's uh, nice to be down here again. We've actually spent quite a bit of time down here over the last month. Uh, as many of you know, um, on uh, March 6th, we lost uh, an amazing woman, my mother-in-law, um, Corey Oma DeYoung passed away. And uh, it's again been a difficult uh, process and uh, every day, um, you know, the memories of her and, and different stories that we shared and different experiences uh, keep flooding back. So it's nice to be down here and spend some time with, uh, with um, Pop, uh, Peter's father as well. Uh, recently, they celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary. I don't think there's too many people out there that can say that. Uh, she was 93 and my father-in-law, Peter, is 94. And um, just amazing, they lived in their own home and, and still do. And uh, we're just so happy that we could come down and, and spend time with them over the last month or so. Uh, she was exceedingly proud of her family. Uh, the four boys then turned into four daughter-in-laws and uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Um, she was uh, always cherished them all and gave of herself to ensure their happiness and comfort. Uh, Oma expressed this many times when we were together and used her sense of humor, her energy and enjoyment of the moment to show all her love to the family. Um, the pain of Oma has, is not being present is, is real. You know, we, we feel it each and every day, each and every moment. But of course we are comforted by the knowledge that her suffering is over and that she lies in the arms of our Lord and Savior who constantly says to us, come thou good and faithful servant. Uh, she will truly be missed uh, with our family. So, um, yeah, so we've, we've, you know, gone through some times this year and uh, we just always have to treasure those memories and the moments that we can share with our family. Um, so, yeah, so we're just spending a little more time down here. So I might have this backdrop <laughs> a little bit more often. So, but it's just great to be able to have the flexibility that we can, uh, Peter and I, that we can work pretty well anywhere so it's that's that's nice as well so um, as I mentioned spring is here and I think we're all ready for some sunshine and some warmer weather um, I know there's still snow out there in some areas but uh, the weather's getting warmer and the snow is melting um, last week we spent the week up in uh, Halliburton Ontario for the kids March break or the grandkids March break I should say um, with some of our children of course the three grandchildren were there for the week as well um, yeah, between skating and the, the beginning of the week was fairly cold and everything was frozen. There's lots of snow. So we had skating, tobogganing, building snow forts in the snow, uh, a day out to the Halliburton Wolf Center, which was, is an amazing, amazing, uh, area. So if anybody has ever goes in that area of Halliburton, please, you know, take a visit to the Wolf Center in that area. Uh, we went bowling, we visited museums, and then towards the end of the week, we were sitting on the front porch in 15 degree weather, just in our sweatshirts, which was kind of neat as well. And the kids were playing on the porch with just their sweatshirts on. Um, yeah, it was certainly a 
fun week and uh, lots of memories that we made uh, during the week as well. So um, also springtime is a new beginning, a new start. Uh, you know, everything kind of gets fresh and, you know, you start that gardening or thinking about the gardening. I'm sure a lot of you have uh, ordered your seeds already and some of you might have already planted those seeds and just start to see them grow. Um, painting projects. I know I'm starting to look at a couple of the different spring painting projects so just to have something fresh. Uh, spending time outside, it just certainly makes you feel better. And just thinking about going for walks is a little bit easier. It's not cold. You don't have to bundle up. You don't have to worry about the snow or the the uh, the slipperiness out there, all the um, ice. The temperature is warmer and the days are getting longer. Uh, some trees are starting to bud. We have a, like a pussy willow, pussy willow bush that's just outside our door and you can see it starting to bud already. And I think in general, you just feel a bit happier. It just, just helps your, your, um, your, whole, your whole self being, I guess, so to speak. Um, when it comes to creating, it is also a great time to do some decorating or to freshen things up. I know I have a lot of different painted pieces that I put outside, uh, signs and, you know, things in the garden. And um, this is the time to get those out to maybe give them a, a light sanding. Uh, if you have to touch up any of the painting at all to do that. And then I always give it another couple of coats of like a sealer. Um, to see that you can do this in the spring or in the fall by typically in the fall you're just kind of putting them away you don't think about it um, <clears throat> so this is the time to to take those signs out and freshen them up and give them a, a coat of sealer or two um, I like to decorate in some fresh colors of course you know all those Easter spring colors just make you feel better getting some you know uh, flowers out but I also do have some different flowers that are like artificial that I kind of put on the side porch and um, just makes you feel a little bit better um, just some of those fresh colors so um, deco art has actually sent me uh, a couple of videos and this one was kind of neat it was um, uh, five easy crafts to spruce up your outdoor space for spring so I'm going to share that with you so that you can get some ideas of, of what to do in the springtime and uh, also, you know, just some easy things to do. So let me just get this going here for you. And...
there's some really great easy projects to do just to spruce things up for spring and for summer. Uh, so thank you again to DecoArt and uh, for sharing these um, wonderful videos with us that we can uh, share with you as well. So, um, so today on the show, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, our first live guest is Marie Nays. Um, Marie has always challenged herself to study. Many of the art styles she has mastered include acrylics, oils, ink and rouge, pen and ink, <coughs> sorry, pastels, watercolor, sculpture, pottery and calligraphy. Um, Marie divides her time between the rolling hills, the vast plains and big sky country of the southern Alberta and the towering trees, cool breezes and an ending ocean of the west coast British Columbia. Both inspire her. Doesn't that sound amazing? I think I want to go to both. <laughs> <laughs> a great place to live for sure. Part of her love of art is the exchange of ideas, thoughts, creative moments between artists. She loves to teach as well. Over the course of her career, she has taught over 3,000 classes and 30,000 students. Amazing. She believes all art starts from the passion within. But often artists are torn between letting those passions flow and the practicalities of everyday life. Each artist is at a different stage in developing their art and artistic style. Isn't that so true? She believes the instructor's role is to understand the student and gear the lesson to each individual. Find what works and encourage it. So just amazing. Thank you, Marie. And uh, we'll get her in here. Welcome, welcome. I think she's almost here. Uh, hello, Marie. <laughs> Are you there? Hmm. I know she's here somewhere. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. There we go. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hi, Marie. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. So Thanks so much for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you. It was warning me that it was being live streamed, and until I said "got it," it wouldn't allow me to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's something new because I had it for two weeks in a row that I saw that and then I just hit some, it's got it. And then what's the other thing? Yeah. Cancel or just, something like that. And I hit the wrong thing and I just went blank and I had to come back into my own live stream. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a new thing. How are you, Audrey? It's great very to see you. Very good. Very good. It sounds amazing where you live. Uh, Bowen is pretty spectacular. Bowen Island. Uh, we're 20 minutes from West Vancouver, Horseshoe Bay, Ferry Terminal. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, you can be in town if you need to go. But I find most days I just want to stay on Bowen and wander the paths and teach my art classes. And yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> now, how many years have you been teaching now? Oh, my goodness. I started. I didn't see it here, so I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how long? <laughs> well, I I would say I, I started painting in 88 and 80, 87, 88, because that's when my son was born and I was pregnant when I started. And then seriously started teaching in about 95, 96. I started with two students in my basement. And before you know it, we had classes running, two, two teachers and classes running every evening. And yeah, it was crazy. So yeah. lo a lot of fun. I think that's certainly because that's when I actually started painting too, was about 88. My, I was expecting my daughter. And yeah. 87, 88 as well. And uh, that's when I started as well. And it seemed that was a really big um, push right at that point in time. That uh, It was just huge. Painting. I think so. Yes. Yeah. 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 So what are some of the things that you're working on right now? Like what are keeping well, your days busy, so to speak? My, my days, um, I broke my ankle last October. And so um, I was just literally getting back into teaching. I hadn't been teaching for about 10 years and I was literally just getting back into getting my classes up and running and, and, uh, and broke my ankle. So I was on pause for three solid months, couldn't do much of anything. And so now I'm filling my days. I teach Zoom classes as well. Uh, last week, we just started in-person classes. With COVID, we were a little gun shy. And um, so teaching, and then I stock two galleries with my paintings and my decorative pillows and decorative uh, other decorative home decor items. And so I'm busy keeping those stocked. They're, you know, wow. things are 
people are starting to go out and adventure a little bit again. And, and uh, we're on the West Coast. We live in a wonderful area where there's a bit of tourism and, you know, people want to wander where it's nice with the ocean. And so uh, we find sales are quite steady with with uh, paintings and art. So those are the things keeping wonderful. keeping that all going. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Wonderful. That's great. Um, and what's something that's perhaps positive or great that's happened over the last couple of years with having to stay in a little bit more and things like that? What what changes come to your life? Well, for me, it was healing from a broken leg. <laughs> yeah. And that to me is very positive because sometimes you need you need to to take a pause and it makes you realize how blessed we are and how you know the things that we're we're wanting to do are even more important at that point so i live in a um a wonderful community here on bowen and i have my 88 year old mother-in-law who lives with me as well as my son and daughter-in-law and they're expecting their first baby any day now oh, wow. so so having time to actually teach and help others develop their understanding of art um, and their own passion and what they want to express in their art, I think is uh, is really the gift that I feel that has been one of the best things to realize that's where I want to be and that's what I, I want to be doing for the next however many years. So, yeah. So, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Well, and that's true. I do find a lot of people, you know, even though COVID was not a good thing, in general, but I do yeah. find that a lot of people say, you know, it just made them stop and, you know, take a real look at their life and what was important and what they wanted to do and focus on that. So it's yes. in a way, you know, it's a negative that kind of we've all turned into a positive, so to speak. Yeah. So make make lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> make lemonade and add the vodka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> perfect perfect um do you have any you know upcoming classes or products that you've been using yeah. or something different that you want to share with us yeah sure so right behind me is west coast uh west coast sunset or west coast dreams and i um i'm going to teach that one in april i have it here on my screen yeah april 6th and 13th i teach mainly in the daytime um, just because family is evenings and weekends, but um, I will be teaching about two to three classes in March, April, May, and then I shut it down usually for June, July, August, and then gear back up big time in, in September. Yeah. Um, I find being out here on the West Coast, everybody's into their gardens and, you know, going across to Tofino and Euculid and Qualicum and yeah, so so uh, teaching is on pause and we get to enjoy and then we come back. So so I'll be teaching that one. And then I'm also teaching a palette knife uh, class, um, creating a wave. And that'll also be in April. I don't have the example here. Um, it's I'm I've got a show running at one of the galleries and it's it's um, one of the pieces that I've submitted to the show. So. So, yeah, but you can go on my website and see them all in the art class section there. And so the website is I know I have it here somewhere. It's just my name, Marie oh. Nays dot com, M-A-R-I-E-N-E-Y-S dot com. So oh, perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, will you be teaching these live and by Zoom like people can or is it just live? Uh, I, I probably will just teach via Zoom. I haven't tried to do both at the same time. Um, I find, you know, attentions tend to tend to be towards the students that are in front of you a little bit more when you've got that in, in person. My in-person classes are Tuesdays. And so I have a group of artists that come in on Tuesdays oh. in the mornings and we paint together. Yeah. So they all do their own thing. They paint what they want to paint on. Yeah. Although if somebody wanted to paint, you know, in person and do the West Coast glow, they could do that, you know, in the class. So. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. And we are so happy that you're teaching at the Art Waves online show. You taught yeah. for us many years ago and in Calgary and Edmonton. I'm trying to remember what. I did. I did both. I, I don't think there was. Yeah, I did Edmonton. I did Calgary and I did. Was it Kingston? You had it. Um, there was one in Penticton. No, Pen it was in in the east. So wherever oh, London, maybe it was in London. London I did the London yes, show in London. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so you've yeah. been paying or teaching with us for quite a few years, then you kind of took a break and now we have you back. So we're really excited yeah. for that as well. So uh, maybe I will um, spotlight you and you can just share your projects that you will be teaching. Sure. And then we'll go into a demo. So I'll just, uh, now for some reason that spotlight is funny. Now the spotlight's not there. I'm just going to pin you. So I will oh. try to be quiet so that I just have you. Oh, I think I'm still in the waiting room on my spotlight. Oh, there it is. Okay, yes, that's probably why. There we go. We'll get that one in here. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of uh, of um, yeah, of Zoom. Yeah, yeah. The joys of technology. Uh, now, okay, so now I see you there, but I don't see the. There we are. Okay. So for some reason, again, I'm pinning it. It won't let me spotlight it that's really strange oh there we are spotlight for her. no how's that hope, yeah hopefully that's gonna work <laughs> okay there we are so on wednesday april 27th i will be teaching beach dreams and these are all fun easy pieces they're not pieces that are super complex and we do a bit of blending, um, wet on wet blending with some different beautiful colors. In this case, the palette is very um, warm blue greens and uh, a bit of the browns, a bit of the, the sandy tones. So that is Beach Dreams on Wednesday, April 27th. That class is going to run from 5 until 9 Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. in Vancouver. And then I'm doing on Thursday, April 28th, Over the Hill. And this is a Southern Alberta scene and it is so spectacular, the vast rolling plains in Southern Alberta and the warm yellow ochres and greens that you see. And where our property is, we've got some property down there and it's in, in the Porcupine Hills, right across from the Cowboy Trail and, and um, and it's a gravel trail. So it's certainly not a, a big highway or a road that we get into our place down there. So it's kind of fun. And this one will just, we'll just develop our sense of again, blending and having some texture as well. So it's a fun piece for that. And then on Saturday, April 30th, I'm gonna do West Coast Bliss. And this is a very limited palette. It can be done with any kind of paints, uh, Deco Art Americana, it can be done. I happen to be using the Golden brand, um, but it can be any any brand of paints and a little bit of glazing medium. And so if you're okay, I'll do a real quick mini demo for you. That sounds perfect. And again, because I've been out of it for a while in terms of teaching, I tend to encourage people to use what they have um, I don't have a specific brush line currently. I I certainly love the Heinz Jordan, the Canadian brushes, the Heinz Jordan brushes, um, but I'll pick up pretty much anything that I've have stockpiled over the last 30 years of my painting career. And what I'm doing is just, I've put a green piece of masking tape across my canvas and you can use a canvas, you could use a wooden board. This piece could be painted on anything approximately nine by 12 in size. And I start by picking up a little bit of glaze. And I think Deco Art Americana sells glaze as well. Um, glaze is just a product that helps transparentize your paint, but it also helps um, make the paint stay open longer. And so, we want to use it to help our paint to stay open longer. And that allows us to do some blending. And the technique is pretty simple. I just cover the canvas in glaze. And then I have out on my wet palette, I have my four, five colors that I'm working with, white, crimson, red, yellow, and Payne's gray. And I've mixed up some really simple, beautiful, um, almost Easter colors, I guess, if you're thinking very soft pastel colors. Um, and all I'm gonna do is pick some of the uh, light pink up in my brush, sweep it across. And you can do two ways of creating values and darks and lights in a piece. You can do that 
when everything's wet and that's what we call wet on wet blending or you can do uh, let things dry and you can layer your colors in and in this case I'm going to put my pinky tone in and while things are wet I'm going to pick up some of my yellow and I'm going to put that in and of course, yellow and red make orange. So we may get a little bit of an orange tone coming into the piece. And then I'm going to pick up some of the light orange that I created with my uh, mixing red plus yellow and white, of course. And this color may be um, a bit lighter orange than what's on my picture. I could certainly pick up a tiny bit of a, a red and a crimson and shift that just slightly. So you can see that with a bit of glaze underneath the paint, you've got lots of playtime and you can be blending out any colors that you want to put in. So that's an example of how easy it's going to be to paint our, our pieces. At any point in time, I could pick up a tiny bit of Payne's Gray, and I've just put it in the middle of my fan. And I could do this while the piece is wet, or I could wait till it dries. And I'm just going to work some of the sky colors, some of the darker clouds in. So this is a nice sunset happening on the west coast of Vancouver Island. The islands that are here happen to be part of the Frank Island chain. So there's uh, just off to the, the one side is a teeny tiny little island called Frank Island. So you can see how in a matter of minutes, we're going to be able to get this sunset in. Beautiful, and then That's I, wonderful. And then, that, then I can yeah. take a small little liner brush and I can pick up some Payne's Gray. And of course we can transfer, we'll probably transfer our design on with a line drawing, but I can simply start putting in my island and build the color of the island. And I could wait until the paint behind it is dry um, or I could do it while it's wet. And by, by doing it while it's wet, we're gonna get a, mm, variety of values. So we'll get some dark Payne's gray tech tones and we'll get some light, um, lighter tones as well. And to do a tree, it's as simple as coming in with a bit of paint and just going back and forth with our brush. Harder to see. I don't know how, how easy it is to see that in our camera here. I haven't zoomed it in on, on the art camera, but that gives you an idea of how fun and easy this piece is gonna be. But it's a it's a very effective piece. And it's um it's been I've when I created, I've had a lot of people say, oh wow, you know, so I it's I think it's the glow, the colors. As always, whenever you create and paint, you want one tree to be way bigger than the others to give you a feature or a focal point on that island. Very Beautiful. simple. Very yeah. nice, Marie. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna remove the art. Is there anything else you wanted to show us? Or that's, yeah, that's was I think that uh, gives you a taste of how we're gonna do it. There's a lot more blending that we'll do in the bottom. And of course, if you peel your tape off, it's, you know, it's more effective that way, <laughs> seeing it without that bright green, but. <laughs> Perfect. No, that was awesome. Nice little sneak peek. And I love those colors, how they blended together so nicely. Yeah. Nice. And and then the only other um, uh, thing is at the, the get together party on Tuesday night, I will be demoing. I don't know if you can see it. I'll be demoing the irises, a blended iris. So just to give you an, a fun, easy way of, of learning how to blend your irises and create some beautiful bearded irises. So Perfect. Perfect. Very nice. Yes, they were going to be working on that schedule. We have Marie doing a, a demo for us at the, the kickoff party. So that would be on the Tuesday evening. And or actually it's 5 p.m. Eastern. So whatever the time yes. is, it might be afternoon, it might be evening. 
5 p.m. is 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Vancouver time, 3 p.m. Edmonton go. time. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you again, Marie, for uh, for being with us today and sharing uh, all your information and, and what you're doing there and your Art Waves classes as well. So I know it was my can... pleasure. All right. Take care. All right. Bye, Audrey. Bye, everyone. Bye. There we go. All right. That was awesome. It's so nice to see Marie. I know quite a few of you have mentioned that, that they're... Uh, it was nice to see Marie and they hadn't seen her for a while and to hear her voice and and she's just such an amazing person and artist and uh, I know anybody that's taken a class from her will certainly be uh, very privileged that way and learn a lot and have a great time. So make sure you get those registrations in and uh, yeah, I see here we have Denise says looking forward to the kickoff party and uh, another Denise fabulous enjoyed that joy such beautiful paintings. Uh, Francine, hi Francine, very nice, thank you, and Jean, and Vicki, and we have Janice, uh, and Joyce, and Linda from Louisiana, uh, Kathy, she loves the cute ideas, so again, uh, thank you everybody for, uh, for sharing that, or for being part of, of Marie's demo, so, uh, and thank you again Marie for, for sharing all your knowledge with us, so. So now we're going to go to our second guest. Our second guest today is Sally Tower Siblis. She's a full-time artist, calligrapher, and educator from Red Deer, Alberta, so another Western girl. In her classes, students are challenged to find their own inner artist by, by unleashing their innate capacity to create. Uh, her teaching style is one that inspires and evokes joy through the, cre the process of creating. Her journey began uh, became an artist, uh, began at the Grant McEwen University, where she studied fiber arts and visual communications. Upon graduating, she landed a job as a window dresser. I've always wanted to talk to somebody who's a window dresser. I just think that was such a neat occupation. And display specialist at the downtown Hudson Bay store in Edmonton. It wasn't until she moved to Red Deer and had her two children that she found her true calling. A friend introduced her to the Lettering Arts Guild of Red Deer and her passion for painting and lettering art was ignited. So we're going to welcome Sally with us here today. Hi, Sally. Hi. <laughs> how are you? Good, how welcome, are you? welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is great. So that, I didn't know that you did that. I think that's such a neat job. The window. Yeah window dresser and display specialist. Oh, <laughs> I've yeah. always seen, you know, people in the windows and all the beautiful displays, especially like stores like Hudson Bay. And that's a really unique job. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I, I, yeah. I loved that job. One of the many jobs that I've had over the years that I really loved. Yeah, yeah. well, it's just, it's so inspiring. Like when you look at some of these windows displays, it's just the coloring or what's, you know, how everything's put together i was like who does this it's just such a neat occupation so yeah that was uh kind of a, a unique part of your your beginning of your career i guess so to speak so it was yeah do you remember uh rhoda from mary tyler moore yes <laughs> she was kind of my inspiration to go into that right <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's what she did yeah yeah <laughs> are you like a rhoda I guess I am kind of. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So what are some of the things that you're working on right now? Any new projects or classes or what's going on in your life? Oh my goodness, a lot of things. I'm looking out my window here into my backyard and I just uh, had my concrete backyard patio slab hammered up yesterday. So there's oh. like this huge pile of concrete out there that has to be removed that's one thing <laughs> but I am I'm always busy doing classes I I do a lot of teaching and um in a variety of different places I teach online I teach at the paint spot in Edmonton I teach for the city of Red Deer I just finished 14 classes for the Alberta Teachers Conference and I do my own classes off of my website. So it's, uh, uh, it's you know, as an artist, you really have to be, and I'm not always good at this kind of entrepreneurial <laughs> slash business person. 
But you got to kind of be, a, you have to wear many hats in this yeah. job. And, and it, at times it's, it's kind of overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, because you you not only have to be creative, like you said, but you have to have the business sense too. There's so many other things that goes along with running a business. You can't just sit there and create all day. There's you know everything else that goes with it, right? That's right. Yeah, totally. totally organizing classes and organizing your time and your budget and your expenses and your fun. Yeah, it just keeps going and going. And you're one person. Yes. <laughs> oh, hopefully, I'll be more than one person soon. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> You're adding to your, uh, I'm hoping. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. So what are, uh, what's perhaps one of the best things that's happened to you over the last year or so, you know, with being a little bit more staying inside and with COVID and that sort of thing, is anything kind of bloomed out of that? Yes, I would say definitely. Um, I started a weekly zoom watercolor class and it's just a gift to have people from around Alberta and sometimes outside of Alberta coming to my Zoom classes. So it's like having them in my studio, but it's digital. So, yeah. and yeah, they've been really great and I've gotten to know more students that way. So I'm very thankful for them. Oh, perfect, perfect. So what type of classes say that you'd be teaching? You said you'd teach for, was it the city of Red Deer or what was it? Yeah. So what so, type of classes are you teaching for them? Um, so I have a mixed media um, faces class coming up with them. Um, I just did a, I do kind of seasonal classes too, like a Valentine's cards class. I'm one of those artists that is kind of multidisciplinary. I can't seem to focus on one thing. And anybody that goes to my Instagram account, they'd be like, what does she do? She does everything. everything. <laughs> Seriously. And I gotta, I gotta, I just... I have to be, um, as an artist, I just need to be challenged continually. So I find it difficult just to stick to one thing. So that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah. To kind of go through it. And now do you basically, uh, what do you paint with? Like what type of medium? Is okay. your good, good uh, question. So I was thinking, oh, I'll just show you guys what I've been working on lately. <laughs> So I like to, uh, lately I've been doing lots of portraits. I do, oh, wow. uh, I don't usually do sketching on uh, dark paper. That was just a one-off thing that I did. And oh, I thought that was fun. Yeah. And this was a watercolor portrait that we did in my Zoom class on Monday. Oh, wow. Amazing. Um, there's another one. I, oh, I wow. often will talk to myself in my paintings. <laughs> and so now, are these are these pictures of actual pieces people or are you just getting them they're coming out from your mind uh the other two were pictures of people one of them was my daughter this one is just kind of one that i just kind of came up with in my head yeah, um, yeah i'm actually teaching some classes this summer at red deer college summer series too well it's called red deer polytechnique now so i thought oh i should show you guys what i'm doing there yeah, um, that would be great. <laughs> I'll just do a share screen for, is that okay if I do a yeah, share yeah. screen? Is it working? Okay, no. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can. I thought I put it on there that anybody could share. If, if we can, it's okay. Here. Okay, try again. There we go. And I'll, I'll pin you. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm doing a class at Red Deer College called the Book of Faces. So it's kind of like a mixed media journal where we're going to be trying all kinds of different um, mixed media techniques. And it's like for me, art is kind of therapeutic. And I, I like to do um, inside some of my paintings, specifically with the portraits or the faces, I will often write down feelings into the work and it's just like a kind of like a release into the piece of art too so if anybody's interested i highly recommend that class and it's in july and you can find out um all the information about my classes on my website and i'm also doing a um a watercolor sketchbook 
I love the East Coast. I've been there a few times and I thought, oh, I need to paint the East Coast in a watercolor sketchbook. So that's another class that I'm doing. Um, and if you don't mind, I'll just shamelessly promote my newest class that I have on my website. It's called Tombow sure. Pin Faces. Yeah. So how the Tombow Pin Faces class came about was I was actually making these, um, these little villages, right? And I was using Tombow pens for them. And I just thought, oh, there's so much fun. And these are very similar to the courses I'm going to be teaching for Art Waves. Yes, yeah. But I thought, hey, what about trying a, a face in using Tombow pens? But the nice thing about um, this way of working is you can also use um, any kind of water soluble markers. So any of these little villages that uh, you want to make or faces that you want to paint, you can do them with water soluble felt pens, which is really great because uh, Tombow pens are quite expensive. They're probably around $30 for a package. So I'm always looking for alternatives so that everybody can create in a less expensive way. Um, so maybe I'll, if it's all right with you, can I play my video of oh, my sure. Tom that would be awesome. Okay, so okay. Perfect. here we go. Now we're not getting this. interested um, in that class I actually have a um, a coupon right now for oh wonderful yes yeah, also your volume's really low it's hard to hear oh, you is it uh oh maybe you put okay. your volume down for the video or okay can you hear me now I, I can hear you it's just very light okay I need to talk louder okay <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. I probably, no, no, no problem. <laughs> I probably should have another microphone here, but I don't. Um, so if anybody is interested in that um, course, I have a coupon available at 15% off for that class. Um, and you can, do you want the coupon code? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> okay, it's SD548, V as in Victor, 8 N as in Nancy. Perfect. And what's the website? SallyTowersSiblis.com. Well, and there's an awful lot of S's in there. I think there's at least four of them. So if you don't, if you don't put them all in when you um, search me, it won't come up. <laughs> <laughs> so just make sure you put everything in there. That's right. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Now uh, let's get to, do you want to share some of the projects you're teaching for uh, yeah, our I've, ways and, um, and then also your demo. So I'm going to hear again, see, it's not so funny how when we did our practice, it had the spotlight. And when I brought in the second thing for Marie, the spotlight was there, but just a pin this time. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes they have a spotlight, but I'm going to pin you anyway, and I just won't talk. Oh, Okay. Um, that way well unless there's a question or something if anybody has any questions again of uh of sally please put it in the chat i'm watching the chat there as well so uh for the facebook chat so anyway here i will pin you and then you can get started and and sure. uh share all your information okay so i'm just going to do um oh i've got okay stop share what's happening here okay can you see what's on my um, table? Nope, I, we can still just see you. Oh, now I, we see your computer screen. 
Oh, I, I know what I have to do here. I have to um, go to my other camera. There oh, we go. Oh, yeah. I always get freaked out by these Zoom meetings because you never know what's going to happen. And then last night we had a really bad windstorm in Red Deer and I'm thinking, oh, I hope my internet works. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So I'm going to be teaching two classes for Art Waves West. Sorry, Art Waves. Art Waves uh, Live, spring uh, show. Art yeah, Waves it's kind of, you, you still have that <laughs> West Coast. Uh... <laughs> and one of them is a quaint village and one of them is a whimsy town. So these are the two projects that we're going to be working on. And I thought as a demo, I would kind of walk you through um, maybe my process of how I do these things. So usually what I do is I just um, start sketching a little village. And I really don't worry about, oh, is my building um, dimensional? Is it, does it look the way that it needs to? I, like my theory about art is, for the most part, I just want to really relax and enjoy myself and have fun. So I try and come up with little um, houses uh, little apartment buildings um and i always think oh, okay well well how can i add a little bit of whimsy to this like maybe um it's gonna have like a heart weather vane on top of it maybe like a rounded little door that kind of thing right because i i feel like this uh way of um creating um I guess it's just very therapeutic. So hopefully the ladies that come to my class are going to find it very therapeutic too. And I think, well, what can I add into this little village that would make it even a little more whimsical? So I'll go in and just add little pathways, um, maybe little trees. And I always like to play with the shape of my trees. And sometimes I will even do um, like a, if I'm going on vacation somewhere, I will often do a little um, um, picture of the little community that I'm going to. Probably some of you would recognize this place. Those of you that are in Alberta, <laughs> This is Canmore. So downtown in Canmore, they have a little, uh, well, it's not little, it's a big sculpture of a face near the Drake Hotel. And then there's grassy lakes up here. So I really enjoy trying to capture the essence of little communities that I visit. So, so that was kind of like one of the reasons I kind of started doing these little villages too. So and I don't like, I don't make them really um, that representational of the actual um, community. It's just like there's little um, landmarks inside the design when people would look at it, they're like, oh yeah, that's Canmore, right? So that's basically how I start. And then, oh, this is kind of dark. I should make this lighter story about that. And then I just go back over with my little um, black waterproof pen. So this is a, a micron size 01 black Pigma pen. And the beauty of these pens is they are waterproof. So you can go back into your design and you can add in color and you can paint with water over top of that and it's not going to bleed. I should show you my um, Tombow pen. Probably some of the ladies that um, have taken the Art Waves classes are very familiar with the Tombow pen. Maybe some aren't, but I'll, I'll show you once I get this drawn out. I'll show you uh, the Tombow pen and I'll show you the Crayola super tip marker. And you can see that they actually yield almost the same results. So 
sometimes in these Zoom meetings, I feel like I have to sing. But I won't do that today. Because you sometimes you feel all alone. Nobody's talking to you. <laughs> well, and I did want to talk because first I had a little bit of a tickle in my throat. So I thought I was going to cough. I know, but also but when I know. talk, then I come on the screen so people won't see what you're doing. <laughs> Life, right? <laughs> oh, no, sorry. No, 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 that's okay. When you go into these big Zoom meetings and there's like 100 people in there and like nobody's talking except you and you think, oh, is anybody there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then you might be prompted to sing a little song just to keep yourself company. Okay, there's my little village. And then I'm gonna color it. So these are these are Tombow pens. Um, these are the expensive um, version of this project. So the Tombow pen is really great because um, it has a nice hard tip on one end and it's got a brush tip on the other, just like this. And they're water soluble and you can mix the colors together. But you can do the very same thing with Crayola markers too. Crayola marker hack, Tombow hack. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like when you wet it just with water and the watercolor brush. Isn't that beautiful? Amazing, amazing. So then my Crayola markers, I like to use the super tip markers because um, you can cover a lot of area in a short period of time. If you use um, the markers that are really fine tip, it takes quite long to get color on there. Oh, I think I need some windows on here, don't I? Put a couple of little windows here. There we go. Okay, so I might start out my... Um, my hill here, just with my green Crayola marker. And some more green Crayola marker. And then often I will go back in and even add, like if you wanna change up the color of that green, just add some yellow to it and you can get kind of a linear green happening. which is really cool, I think. And then the magic is when you go to take your watercolor and your water, you're just fading out that color. So this is actually, I'm doing this on um, Canson brand mixed media paper, but you can use any kind of um, water media paper. Usually I do it on just 140 pound Canson cold press paper. So you can see the beauty of the Crayola marker and how, look how nice and water soluble it is. I never, I never realized you could do that with the Crayola markers. <laughs> Maybe you'll be in my class, Audrey. Yes, I would love to, I love this. So this is, this is what happens when you um, have to come up with a variety of um, ideas for the teacher's conference. You, and you, you want to keep it less expensive too, right? So I thought, oh, Crayola markers. We can do Crayola marker villages. Yeah, I, I love painting these little villages. They are so much fun. And yeah, if you say very, very whimsical and colorful and bright and. Yes. Yeah. I think my brush is a little bit small here. And then maybe I want the yellow sun with more some yellow fiery. Oh, my orange has run out. I have another orange here. Well, oh, you might have to use this one. There we go. And really with very little effort, you can really have this fun, cool little watercolor painting. 
very effective as well. We got about three minutes left, so. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so I feel like, um, what more can I say? I think anybody that, <laughs> that would have like to um, really have cool, fun art class, I highly recommend my class at Art Waves Online Spring Show. So um, you will find this uh, method of painting very, very therapeutic. And uh, do I have some other, I'll show you some other examples. Sounds perfect. So um, Summerland, I went there last summer. So I did a little beach scene. Um, this was a, a community, let's call it a European community because there's a castle in there. I, I like to put castles in some of the paintings too. So what else can I show you here? This is a bigger one that I did. So you can get, you know, huge. You can go huge. It'll just take longer to make, right? Um, and, and yeah, that's that's about it. Um, oh, here's a smaller one. I have a lot of these and I'm actually um, just doing a proposal for the city of Red Deer. They're looking for um, mural artists for the summer. So I thought, oh, this would be so cute on the side of a building and we need community. This is, this is a time in life where we need community after what we just experienced over the last two years. You know, we, we need connection. We need people in our lives. Okay. Now, where am I here? Stop share. You'd think I would know how to use this by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't get myself. Oh, I know. I have to change the video. FaceTime. Here we go. There we go. Sorry about that. No, no, that was wonderful. Just so neat. I love it. When I saw those submissions come in, I thought, oh, they just put a smile right to your face as soon as you see those bright colors and the whimsical buildings. I just absolutely love them. <laughs> so that's great. So so people can get more information from your website. Uh, yeah. That's sallytowersiblis.com. And uh, anyone want to sign up for Sally's class, I know you're going to have an awesome time. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, you can register on uh, the uh, Coast to Coast events uh, under the Art Waves Live Spring Show. So uh, make sure you check that out and get your registrations in. And uh, thank you, Sally. That was just oh, wonderful. You. I loved having you. So thanks for having me. And thank All you right. for um, an another excellent teaching opportunity with your group. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, have a great day and uh, we'll see you later. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> Sally's wonderful. And she's taught for us for many years as well at the Alberta show. So we're really happy to have her uh, teaching for us at the spring show. Uh, just some great projects. You really need to go take a look. It's just a great opportunity to take classes from so many artists um, from all over Canada. And we do have some from the United States as well that are teaching for us. And, uh, you know, the benefits, there's huge benefits to to the online uh, classes, you know. So take a look at uh, what's there on the website. And if you have any questions at all, you know, please just email me, message me, give me a call. We would love to hear from you. So that's it for today's show. Uh, we will be having a show for the next two weeks. So next week, which is uh, March 31st, our live guest is Pamela Kearns and Lana Lamb. So they will be on uh, and doing some demonstrations for you as well. And then uh, I believe the following week, we have two more of the artists from Art Waves Live uh, Spring Show and uh, maybe some sneak peeks and some videos and some more spring projects. So uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you so much for listening, for watching. And uh, thank you to Marie and Sally for, for sharing all their talents with us. And uh, Make sure you take care of yourself, take care of each other, and have a great week. Thank you again. Audrey for Audrey Live.